these hogs today. Tremont Mark and Caleb Battle have been the primary offensive weapons for Eric Musselman so far. And we will see if Arkansas's defense has tightened up in the last couple of days. Baycott and Brazil to jump it up. Cormac Ryan out for today's game with a strained right ankle. So North Carolina will start the freshman Elliott Cadeau. Arkansas starting lineup brought to you by Atlantis. Brazil, Davis, Blocker, Tremont Mark, and Makai Mitchell. Inside, that's Makai Mitchell. Ball fake off the glass and in, and Arkansas with the early lead. Yeah, you like something other than an Arkansas guard dribbling one on one into a tough shot early. And they've had a heavy dose of that so far on the island. Mitchell, a kid with really good hands and traffic move. Here's Cadeau now as they get it inside and a foul on Mitchell. Jeff Harkness on the call. So Makai Mitchell picks up his first to see his guarding Baycott. Cadeau getting the start today for North Carolina. What's been your take on the freshman at least so far? Very impressed. Very impressed. Has not turned the ball over yet in Atlantis. And he's played heavy minutes. And that's one area that North Carolina has done a great job of is taking care of the, of the ball. He gets the start in place of Cormac Ryan. Two completely different players, but two in white in Hubert Davis's eyes and mine. More than you would expect from a freshman. Elliot Cadill, eight assists, no turnovers in 40 minutes in the two games here in the Bahamas. This is Cadill. Ingram down. Ingram with Mark on him, bullies his way down and rolls it home. That's what he can do, both outside with the three, but also the strength inside. He can play for Villanova, because that is Villanova's offense right there. I, I have fallen in love with Harrison Ingram and talking to that North Carolina staff prior to the game. All these kids that have transferred in, Harrison Ingram, Cormac Ryan, they have ownership in that North Carolina jersey. These guys come in not as rentals, but as owners. And Harrison Ingram, all, all week long, has taken advantage of that mismatch, hard match three position that he plays. Mouse in the house, yeah. I like it. Blocker with Cadeau on him. Blocker weaving inside, rolls out. Baycott the rebound. Carolina on the move. Davis, a three. Yeah, he's shooting the ball a pretty good clip as well. The numbers say 31% on the year, but you saw it yesterday. Shooting that ball with confidence. The Carolina run game, bam, fast to the corners. Mitchell gives off as Mark handles here. Jamon Mark will hoist and hit. And that's a two. Several Arkansas guards can bounce their way into a jump shot. Very good at the one-on-one -on -one part of the game are these Razorbacks. Ingram wide open. Off the mark. Loose ball and ends up with Arkansas. And Layden Blocker, who got his first career start yesterday, and now a turnover. Ingram, look out! Arkansas had 18 turnovers yesterday against Memphis and gave up 27 points off those turnovers. Careless with the basketball has been a problem for the Hogs on the island. Harrison Ingram, tough to deal with. He's got the width, but he's also got the wingspan. He goes 6'7", but he's got a 7-footer's wingspan. So that's tough at the defensive end. Davis swings. Brazil puts it on the floor. NBA scouts, a lot of them here, and they like Trevon Brazil. Oh, good defense. Baycock with the block. Yeah, wicked defense by North Carolina, and Arkansas kind of guarded themselves as well by getting the ball stuck in the corner. Look at R.J. Davis. And this is a kid that always plays with a chip on his shoulder, and there's a the guy you're talking about, and I'm with you. I love this kid, Harrison Ingram. He's not just a versatile offensive player, versatile defensively. Can bang inside, hold his own, get out in passing lanes, big-time pickup out of the portal. Feed inside, Mitchell on Baycott and one. And Armando Baycott will go to the line. He owes North Carolina a good game. I think he realizes it after yesterday. I know he had 18 rebounds, but it was not an offensive factor. 
And his ability to post up and finish through contact has to continue to grow. A good start and a confidence bucket from Orlando Baycott. Kai Mitchell will sit. Chandler Lawson will check in. In the quarterfinals, 10 points, 8 rebounds, just 8 points in the semis. Has got a lot of shots. You made the point how last year, what was it, just a third of the time did he lead North Carolina in, in field goal attempts. Yeah, like 5 out of the 32 games that he played. And that, that cannot be the case this year. Okay, the battle here. Brazil. And a give off to battle. Getting inside and a give off. And a foul on North Carolina. I think that'll be on Cadeau. It is an off the bounce game defensively for North Carolina. Multiple guys for Arkansas. They spread the floor and try to win their matchup off the bounce and Hubert Davis today his guys better square people up stick their nose on the number and stay in front of the basketball against Arkansas Let's see if they can get Trevin Brazil involved here he is Brazil as they move the basketball shot clock winding down Ellis off balance tough shot and Ingram swoops in for the rebound. Carolina on the move. Withers on Brazil. Cadell absorbed the contact, no call. Baycott saves it. Nope, he was stepping on the baseline. And it's out of bounds. It'll be Arkansas basketball. Time out on the court. North Carolina with the early 10-4 lead. John Chambi and Jimmy Dykes. Hope you had a good Thanksgiving yesterday. I know I'm still full. We got a great meal. And get it for his strength in ISO game. And David Jones yesterday, he made a name for himself. And to quote Eric Musselman, he kicked our butts and did anything he wanted with the ball. This is an Arkansas team defensively is not at the standard that Muscle's teams have typically been held to. And if they don't tighten that part of it up, it's going to be a difficult sled for a while. This team can score, but their ability or inability to get stops and rebounds has been a concern. And remember, in that championship game, Villanova acutely aware of David Jones. He played at both St. John's and at DePaul, so... I mean, certainly familiar with what he brings yeah. to the table the last couple of years. So yeah. it's not like the Wildcats won't know about Jones. If they weren't, they are now. Yeah. After last night, for sure. But yeah, that's uh, those are two teams that I think are, are destined to make a deep run in March. Talking about Memphis and Villanova. These two teams right now are capable as well. They both have answers that need to be questioned. or questions that need to be answered. But the talent is there. Inside, off the glass, too strong for Lawson. North Carolina the other way. Gang rebounding by North Carolina early on that defensive glass. Ingram finds Davis. Withers, left hand, nice move. There it is, I'm talking about Arkansas's defense. You allow a guy that's... 6-8 to drive the ball from 23 feet on the floor to the rim uncontested. Just a blow-by by Withers. A 7-0 North Carolina run. Trevin Brazil with Withers on him. Good hands by Davis. And reverses it for the deuce. And we welcome those of you that just watch FAU get past Texas A&M. Here in the Bahamas, Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlanta. It's our third place game. Turnovers against North Carolina. It's a big time matchup, Boog, for a third place game between North Carolina and Arkansas, but so far, Hubert Davis's guys 
just clamping down defensively. Yeah, they've slowed down the must bus. They have, man, that's not easy to do. That must bus has a lot of fun, by the way. I've watched them on the island. Battle jumper, got it. Nice shot. Caleb Battle, they had gone over three and a half minutes without a point and end a nine old Carolina run. Davis hesitation, Baycott jumper. And it ends up in the hands of Withers. Paxson Wojcik. Withers, the rebound, the follow wouldn't go, but he's fouled. Well, it's been all Carolina early, and they are without one of their key guys, Cormac Ryan, but they still have a lot of weapons. This Harrison Ingram kid is as versatile offensively as we have in the college game right now. R.J. Davis constantly plays with a chip on his shoulder, and that Carolina run game, especially off turnovers, is lethal. Luke, you bring in transfer guys like Hubert Davis did and Cormac Ryan out in this ball game. It was terrific yesterday in the matchup against Villanova. Sprained his ankle late. And to be determined if he'll play Wednesday night against Tennessee in that SEC ACC challenge, but he is a big time player and a huge loss for North Carolina in this third place game. Yeah, long wing player that could shoot it. It was a bizarre play. Here's what happened. He's trying to miss a free throw. His left ankle rolls, watch it. And then his right ankle rolls. And it was the right that actually caused him all the pain. And that is officially what the injury is, a right ankle sprain. Never seen it before in, in, in basketball. And he was trying to miss that free throw. And a smart foul by Villanova to put him on the line with 2.3 to go. Battle inside. Look at that. Weaving to the bucket. Uses the left hand and had the basket to protect him. Trimble the other way. Stepped on the baseline. It's a turnover. Well, those Arkansas guards, especially Battle, Devo Davis, when they get the ball with momentum, going downhill right there. It is turned the corner and lights out. Really good hang time and body awareness. Let the defender slide by. Caleb Battle with the ball here. He was Temple's leading scorer, averaging about 18 a game last year, and he walked. There will be a lot of one-on-one -on -one out of Arkansas's offense, and at times it works, at times the ball gets stuck, and they, they take tough guarded shots, too many, early in the season. From backing down. Baycott tried the one-handed tip, wouldn't go, and the rebound by Lawson. Seldom does Baycott go for a rebound with one hand, and it cost him. Davenport, too many steps. Five turnovers on the Hogs. Eric Musselman, fifth year. At Arkansas, three straight years advancing at least to the Sweet 16. And he's brought this program back to some prominence. What he's done, as well as anybody, is branded Arkansas basketball again, although they give up a baseline cut out of the corner by Trimble. But that Arkansas brand, the energy, the must-bus, the transfer portals, the success in March, it's all in place. This just team has not found their footing yet early in the season. L. Ellis, set rolls off, rebound from Washington, and here come the heels. Ingram gives off, Trimble. Davis pull up jumper, and the rebound from Battle. Arkansas the other way. 17-8, Carolina with the lead as we close in on 12 to go first half. And that one knocked down from Tremont Mark. Good ball move by Arkansas because the ball has been stuck on the first side of the floor several possessions. That time, it finally touches the second side of the floor. Wide open stroke for Tremont Mark. 
Davis finds Wojcik. Tremble flying in for the rebound of the putback. Yeah, he's a big time athlete. The best defender that Hubert Davis has, but he's a type of guy you don't run plays for him. He just makes plays. Well done by seven and white. Kid from Wisconsin, Menominee Falls. I needed to get that in. I just wanted to show off that I could pronounce <laughs> Menominee Falls. What can't you do as a play-by-play -play oh, guy? Another we turn of lots of time by Arkansas. Well, the athlete Seth Trimble. Gonna get major minutes today without Cormac Ryan. He's making the most of his time so far. Flies in. No hog checks him. Carolina up early. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Power, performance, attitude. Atlantis. I know I would. Woo pig, as they might say. Yeah. Carolina by eight. John Chompy, Jimmy Dykes here in the Bahamas from the Imperial Ballroom. Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis. Ingram lost the handle, and it kicks back to him. And then a feed inside Washington and one. How about that sequence? It hit the side of the backboard as Ingram completely lost it and then got it back. And tremendous concentration by Washington in a loose ball situation. I love this kid. And that ball's in traffic and he gets it and takes a pretty good hit. You know, it's interesting, North Carolina, they practice daily with goggles on their big guys that are blacked out and they blink like twice every second to just give you a little bit of vision but it really helps them concentrate in those type of situations Roy Williams did it for years as much as they feed the post creative ways to teach their post guys to attack that basketball in traffic to really concentrate on securing the basketball on a post feed yes Davis swings Mark has it shot clock at 10 Get something going here. Baseline. And that one short from Layden Blocker. And make your layups, make your free throws. I say it every game. So important. You go back and check the tape. Arkansas just blew an easy one. Close it on 10 to go. Carolina by 11. Davis will try. And Washington inside. And he gets bumped. And Jalen Washington really active as a 6'11 kid. And this is what they've done in every pregame warm-up since they've been on the island. They put those goggles on, and they are completely blacked out. You can't see anything. And they start their eye and feed the post to Jalen Washington. But it'll blink probably three times per second I put them on. Just enough for you to see a little bit of the action. But, man, it really forces you to concentrate on those entry passes and loose balls that are around the rim. I, I love the creativity that I see now in college basketball teaching guys. I've been reminded by Seth Greenberg that Sebastian would not be happy at all with me talking about pigs on national TV. You're just, you're a man of the animals. You know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm loyal to that sea lion. I know. You've heard <laughs> people talk. 6 0 run. <laughs> In Carolina, the lead is a dozen. Jumper will fall right there for Tremont Mark. Just go get you one. His elbow pull up game is as good as Arkansas has to work with. When you back off and give him space to come at you, it is money. Whoa, oh, wow. wow. Look at that shot. Erased. Flying in was Bay Fall. This is a kid that they weren't even sure was going to be able to make the trip. Earlier this week, he had to go to New York to get his passport cleared up. And his shot blocking ability and length, something that Eric Musselman has been looking for to tighten up his defense. If you can't protect the rim, you can't protect the scoreboard. Fall a big time recruit and showing off the athleticism as he erased that shot. And they get a foul on. Caleb Battle. Well, he's from the Senegal and he had some passport issues that had to fly to New York. 
late last week to get it cleared up. They weren't even certain that they, they could get it done, but impactful defender, 10 in red. Ingram looking for some help. Cadeau, shot clock is at six. Got to do something. Hoist. And that one is off the mark. Missed everything. Jamon Mark here. Mark aggressively at the basket and puts it home. And he's off to a good start with nine points. Mark who had 25 against Stanford in that double OT win. Davis can't hit, and a foul on North Carolina. Who get it's amazing what one defensive play like Bayfall pulled off can ignite the energy to your entire team. And that hard drive of the ball right here, Cadeau is just lazy. I mean, he's not in a stance, he just accepts the drive. And Tremont Mark just goes right through his chin to the rim. Arkansas, fourth in the country in free throw attempts. They are a hard driving downhill bunch of dudes that Eric Musselman that's where their offense is at their best Joseph Pinion is checked in for Arkansas Razorbacks have not attempted a free throw so far today battle <laughs> off the mark and it ends up in the hands of blocker they'll set it back up Davenport here at five battle well, they get a foul on North Carolina Marcus Pettigrew with the call going over and conferring with Owen short they got the foul on RJ Davis They called a common foul, did they not, Boo? I believe they're so. They're looking to see if it's more than a common foul. Yeah, a hook, possible hook and hold is what they're saying. I mean, Davenport was saying that possible hook and hold. Oh, it's short coming over to explain to Jimmy Dykes as Jim Hartness and Marcus Pettigrew will look at it. It's got to be right there, the possibility of a hook and hold or a hook and clamp. As Davenport came up out of it quickly, with that hook and hold move, yeah, right, right there. That's it was it was quick, but it was a little bit of a clamp down by R.J. Davis. And Davenport gets the officials' attention. Now they take a look at. I, I think they'll just stay with a common hold. It, it didn't. To me, the clamp didn't last long enough. Hubert Davis getting an explanation. I mean, there was an initial clamp down in the hole by the look of Hubert Davis' face. I'm not so sure that's that, that's going to be the call. Hubert Davis does not seem happy about the result, but what do you got? Yeah, just a common foul. Okay. I thought that's what it would be. I mean, replay slows it down. It looks like the clamp was longer than it, than it really was in live sure. action. But I like the fight back by Arkansas in the last three or four minutes. Their defense has turned it up. And, Boog, you can get hot on defense just like you can get hot on offense. We don't talk about it enough. And that's how you stop run. You get stops and get out and go and let these Arkansas athletes get in the open floor. That's when they are at their best. Two good teams that one of them is going to lead the island one and two. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, it's a good point. Two teams both coming in to the tourney ranked in the top 25. And one of them is going to get out of here with two losses. 23-15, our score, 22 to go. College basketball continues all over the ESPN family of networks the ESPN events invitational Florida Atlantic 
getting past Texas A&M earlier today. And the championship will come your way on Sunday. And they await the winner of Iowa State and Virginia Tech. And that's coming up 5.30 Eastern on ESPN2. That is from Orlando. Good win for Ford Atlantic as they went into that ESPN Events Invitational already with a loss. And it felt like, that, that man, they had to get a couple of resume wins. And I'm certain that is one against Texas A&M. We're going to get a chance to see Memphis in a championship game. They knocked off Arkansas in the semifinal. Semifinal. FAU is picked one in the American. Memphis two. Davenport, quarter three. No, it's a two. He was bothered by an ankle yesterday and didn't play. He's another big wing that can make a shot, a guarded shot with hands in his face. I, mean, I don't think it was complicated action for North Carolina to defend. They just get all stuck, hung, hung up. Stand by your man. Tammy Wynette defense doesn't work, and Davenport just pops to the corner. You know that song? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I probably am more familiar with the Blues Brothers version of it, but <laughs> it's, it's not what you want as a defender. I can just I tell it. you. I got a chance to work a few games with the late great Bob Knight and one of the things that coach Knight later in his career really believed out of bounds he always zoned he said I'm not gonna bother with trying to figure out every single play they're gonna run out of bounds yeah let's run zone and it did a, his team a really good job of preventing threes off inbounds most teams don't have zone out of bounds plays under they don't to coach Knight's point if they have, they have one and just happy to get it in. Eight point advantage, jumper there, and Davenport making an impact. Yeah, those guards now are starting to punch that paint for Arkansas. And North Carolina, I said it yesterday, I think they open up their hips too easily. I know they want to force you down, but man, they give you some driving lanes that I think is too easy to give up. Cabell as they look to try and isolate Baycott. They, yes. they feed him. He got good post position, but had it knocked away. Typically a kid with good hand, but Arkansas's defense is speeding North Carolina up offensively. <laughs> Davenport can't hit that time. Ingram grabs it, push up ahead. And now it's Davis and Pinion fouls him. <laughs> That Wu Pick Sui is starting to fight their way back in. Just a little bit of a butt screen by Blocker allows Davenport to tor turn the corner. A lot of ball screen action, a lot of off the bounce action. You got to defend.
Back here, a third place game. Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis. John Chambi and Jimmy Dykes and Tremont Mark making an impact. Well, the transfer from Houston, no, known as a defender, but he has a phenomenal pull-up game. That is his sweet spot right there to win the battle to get to the elbow. His ability to drive it and finish. He's got long arms. He's a good layup maker. And he's actually a better point guard than I think Arkansas thought they were getting when he went into the portal. Can handle it as your second point guard. That's the point guard play for Arkansas has not been solid. L. Ellis to me has kind of lost his confidence right now. So it's multiple guys are going to have to handle it. And I trust the ball in the hands of Tremont Mark. Tremont Mark, part of that Houston team that made the Final Four when he was a, yeah. a freshman. Jimmy, I, we talked about it yesterday. I'm still discussing with my people, thinking about entering the portal. Not sure. You? Yeah. Well, you would have a lot of people lined up to take you within the first 24 hours. It just, and I'm not limited to just television networks. Like, there used to be a lot of people that would just want you. <laughs> I'm a good listener. Yeah. <laughs> Davis knocks it down 27 19. RJ Davis with nine. Tremont Mark with nine. And Jeb Hartness with a foul underneath. I believe they got Jeremiah Davenport. Yeah, I think he set a moving screen on a pin down action. But I do like this kid's energy so far. He did not play yesterday against Memphis. And what a game that David Jones had for Memphis. And Musselman said himself, he kicked our butts. And I'm sure he has challenged his Arkansas defense today. That we better not let that happen another time for another guy to go off big. Withers inside, hanging, and scoop shot wouldn't go. Mark with a three, and all of a sudden, Arkansas within five. Mark is on it, is he not? As in on the mark, Arkansas, they flood the floor, man, with speed and shooters. And there you go. That is the type of smooth post position that Baycott has not gotten very frequently down here in the Bahamas. Well, he doesn't demand the ball like you think an older post player should or could. And his hunger level for that basketball has to increase as this year goes on. He's too good of a player with shooters around him this year to not be a double-double guy every single night. Kai Mitchell with Ingram on him. And then a fight for the loose ball. Now, Tremont Mark is, again, he can handle it as a primary handler. He can sprint to the wing and shoot those slot threes out of transition. But the answer is Armando Baycott. Now, he's not the most physical post player in the country, but he's got some nice skills to either shoulder. He can hammer you on that offensive glass. He's actually averaging more offensive rebounds per game than he has his entire career. He's already the all-time leading rebounder in North Carolina's history. He sits with two fouls. Caleb Battle, foul. Caleb Battle wears number zero because he will tell you that's the number of guys that can guard him. I like that. I, I love it. Foul on R.J. Davis. Davis picks up his second. Mark with the bigger Ingram on him. Quick oh, my move. goodness. Oh, and it rolls off. Wow, was that a move from Tremont Mark? He just lost Harrison Ingram yes, he in the did. corner there on the baseline. He, he attacked and then back dribbled and then the explosive big first step to get by Harrison Ingram. And a decent job by Cadeau to rotate over to at least give some resistance at the rim. He just misses one, but that first step and stride of Tremont Mark is hard to handle. <laughs> This is the first. Mark 
74% from the free throw line. As Paxson Wojcik checks back in. 540 to go here in our first half. Bad Boy Moore's battle for Atlantis, third place game. And Mark gets one out of two, and he's got 13. North Carolina, Elliott Cadeau with the basketball. Freshman making this start as Cormac Ryan sitting today with an injured right ankle. Loose ball, out of bounds. Arkansas basketball, bodies all over the floor. Third turnover on North Carolina. Big time defensive play by Tremont Mark. He just come violently towards the ball right here and dig in. Reading that Ingram is going to come back to that left shoulder. It all started by the long reach and just the effort and fight out of Tremont Mark. Guys on the floor in the third place game in Atlantis. These are two really good teams with prideful fan bases packed across from us. Arkansas on the left, North Carolina on the right. North Carolina goes home to take on Tennessee in the SEC ACC Challenge. Arkansas is waiting Duke to arrive in Fayetteville, Arkansas for the first time on Wednesday night. 30th anniversary of that Arkansas Duke National Championship game in 1994. I saw somebody here with a Scotty Thurman jersey. Yeah. He hit, he, he, he hit the shot in Arkansas basketball history. Well, Ellis too strong. North Carolina with one perimeter shooter on the floor in Ingram. Arkansas has got to guard the bounce. Washington inside off the glass in and out, but it'll go to the line. I like this kid. Washington, he's not afraid of contact. He's not a big numbers guy. He averaged two and one as a freshman, but he's to have a 13-point game at Virginia. Not afraid of those collisions at the rim. He hasn't gotten it to drop yet, but it's not out of fear or being timid. Remind some Carolina people of John Henson early with the long wingspan, the defensive activity. Bright future. Jimmy, the other thing on that play that you like, Elliot Cadeau, he had L. Ellis really up in his shorts, really harassing him. He yep. stayed composed and then used a burst to get past him that created the space and gave Washington the opportunity. But think about it, Elliot Cadeau has not had a turnover yet in this tournament. He's playing major minutes for North Carolina as a kid that reclassified out of high school, talking about two in one. Big time pressure, sees the game one, one pass ahead. The stroke is probably a little better than the numbers indicate. But absolutely fearless has been Cadeau so far for the Tar Heels. Davenport jumper would go. Withers the rebound. Now Ingram. <laughs> Withers inside. And that one knocked away. And Mark back the other way, and full head of steam, left-handed scoop will go. Arkansas very aggressive with their run game. And they are better going down the left side of the lane than the right side of the lane. And Cano is fouled by Tremont Mark. Arkansas running off their defense. And when you can rip and run with your 6'5 guy, it puts a lot of pressure on Cadeau, who has not stopped the ball yet in transition. He's had two or three times to do it. Another level of growth for Cadeau. He's got to get down and fight and get more resistance. But you've got long athletes coming at you with Tremont Mark and Devo Davis. L. Ellis is all of 6'3". Khalif Battle is 6'5". That's the strength of this Arkansas program. They pressured the heck out of Purdue in an exhibition game and forced 18 turnovers with all that wing defensive pressure that Musselman has to work with. Cadeau at the line. And shooting two misses the first. Ten total fouls on Arkansas. So double bonus the rest of the way. Seven fouls 
team wise on North Carolina. Think about this kid, Boo. He's he is on the Sweden senior national team, played in the 2023 World Cup qualifier. So he's young in age, but he's old in experience. Three season ACC rookie of the year, Elliot Cadeau, 13th overall recruit in the ESPN 100. Ellis with Cadeau on him, and now Tremont Mark, who leads all scores with 15. Mark yep. hits again. No answer individually, defensively, on Tremont Mark from North Carolina. And he knows it as well, Tremont Mark. Jimmy, this is an interesting group for Carolina. Where do the points come from? That's a good question. 55 and wide is your best option. Inside and one, Washington to the line. Oh, and now it's Raleigh Massimino in the NCAA Final Four coming up after this game, the rematch, right? Think back to that 1985 run. The Villanova group able to get past Memphis and Keith Lee. Dwayne McLean had 19 points. They reached a championship game and played that near perfect game against Georgetown. I mean, that I would say is one of the signature moments in the history of the NCAA tournament. Villanova's run that underdog group. Three Big East teams got to the Final Four, yeah. and Villanova won it all. The near perfect half, second half, and Ed Pinkney, the one of the great guys in college basketball ever. MVP of that Final Four. Trevin Brazil back in the game. Battle, and they get a foul. Just a lot of spread ball screen action by Arkansas. And Eric Musselman, we know his time in the NBA. But he is so good at identifying and isolating the matchup that he favors and spreading the floor with a ball screen opportunity. And just trusting his guards to go to work. Well, one of the things he's not going to like is the disparity at the free throw line prior to this attempt for... Caleb Battle, Arkansas one for two. Carolina's taken 16 free throws, hit 10 of them. We mentioned Arkansas comes in fourth in the country in free throw attempts per game, but North Carolina's not too far behind. They're getting 19 points per game themselves from that charity stripe. They go about it differently. North Carolina more of an inside attack, gets you in foul trouble. Arkansas with their driving guards. It's a two-point game. North Carolina with the lead. And they get the foul on Washington. Look, that's on Cadeau. I mean, that young point guard, you know that ball screen's coming. Yes, absolutely, that's on me. And you've got to stop and not get sped up to operate off that ball screen. He will learn. High IQ kid, but costly turnover. It's a 6-0 Arkansas run. Mark fires. What a half. That's a two, and we're tied. What a half by Tremont Mark. His ability to score now on either side of the floor off the drive or the jump shot. Big time. Mark with 19 points as Ingram hit the floor hard. Harrison Ingram. And he'll shoot two. They get the foul. Uh, Caleb Battle, his second. Eric Musselman is just finding creative ways to get Tremont Mark in space. That time is off of a dribble handoff right into a ball screen. Simple, clean action is hard to handle. And Eric Musselman's play calls are exactly what that has been the first half for Tremont Mark. Mark coming in, averaging a shade under 16 points a game. Had a dozen in the loss against Memphis in the semis, but had 25 against Stanford in that double OT win. And what an all-out battle is going to be this year in the SEC. Six SEC teams in the current AP Top 25 leads the country. And that's the, the depth of not just Kentucky and Tennessee and Arkansas and Alabama, but Mississippi State is the absolute real deal. a and got beat today by a good Florida Atlantic team. Florida, I think, is deserved of, of being ranked the way they're playing right now. It's, it's, it's a league boot that could actually have nine, if not ten, teams 
in late February, March in contention for the NCAA tournament at large bid. A one point North Carolina advantage. Ingram back to the strike. This is the second rebound pulled down by Trevin Brazil. Mark has been sensational here in the first half. He's got Trimble on him. Brazil thought about it. Now we'll take it. And Ingram the rebound. Well, Hubert Davis has his best athlete, Trimble, on Mark. And if you're that, do not switch off. Switch anything else, but not that matchup. Wojcik, wide open look. And was that touched by Arkansas? Nope. Razorbacks basketball, 146 to go. Carolina by a point. Arkansas getting out in those passing lanes, not afraid to overpressure. I mean, Cadeau is the only guy that can really beat you with speed on the floor with the ball right now, and Arkansas knows it, so that mother-in-law constant harassment defense now starting to come into play for the Hogs. Arkansas's first and only lead was at 2-0. Job by Trimble down Brazil. Shot clock under 10. Good cut to the basket. And Layden Blocker gets rocked to the floor by Paxson Wojcik. And Boog, because Seth Trimble is not going to switch off of Tremont Mark, that pin down action works. Tremont Mark gives it up. You don't switch it. And now that curl and Wojcik is chasing instead of defending. Watch Trimble right here. He doesn't switch it out. He knows I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to Mark. I think I can check him. Well, now you've got a double problem because now Tremont Mark can become a really good off-ball screener because of it. The freshman from Arkansas, Layden Blocker. And he'll try to give Arkansas the lead. And does. First leads it to his two nothing Razorbacks. Cadeau. Trimble inside. Brazil rocks it out of bounds. That recovery length and recovery speed and explosion. By this kid, Trevin Brazil is really impressive. He's averaging right at eight offensive rebounds per game since he's been on the island. But that offensive player gets in front of him, but by that long wingspan and explosiveness just eats the ball at the rim. Razor backs by a point. Wojcik going baseline, and he stepped out of bounds. It's a turnover. The defensive pressure of Arkansas is a huge concern for Hubert Davis. If you can't throw it inside as your pressure release, you've got to have playmakers on the perimeter. And Arkansas just completely choking off the water of North Carolina's half-court offense over the last five or six minutes. And if you're wondering, just joining us, Baycott and Davis sitting right now each with two fouls. So Hubert Davis trying to nurse that into the halftime break and now a foul on Ingram and that'll be his first a bad foul by Ingram you're fouling 25 26 feet away with a reach around and you're too important I know that's just his first but you're giving Arkansas unguarded shots at that free throw line right now that's the pulse of North Carolina basketball Baycott and RJ Davis having to sit and watch this final 58 so there they are on the bench as Davenport gets set for two free throws. RJ 10-1 Arkansas run. RJ Davis is interesting is the one guy that Hubert Davis allows to call a timeout during practice. He's designated him as you're the guy that can call one. 
and circle people up. That's that's the trust and the leadership that you have sitting on your bench right now. I mean, he plays with a chip, and when he's on the floor, to me, North Carolina looks different. And Davenport, the Cincinnati transfer, gets him both. It's a 12-1 run, 35-32. Cadeau step back and that rolls home Elliot Cadeau with a big three to tie us up at 35 well, I said it earlier his stroke is better than what his numbers would indicate a big time shot by Cadeau that is his swing skill going forward in terms of the level that he's going to be able to play at one of these days and they get the foul on Trimble well, what Hubert Davis doesn't like is the official from the far side of the floor makes the call. Owen Short right in front of the bench didn't see it. And Owen Short is right there behind the play. And if anything, Trimble maybe got into his landing space. You've got to protect that shoot. Let's watch the feet at the end of this play. Trimble, I think that's what the call was made for. I think that's a, a pretty legit beat from Hubert yeah, Davis. No, it is. Absolutely spot. it is. When you have your primary coverage area in officiating, what you want is the right call being made by the right official. I think that's Hubert Davis's gripe with a call right now more than anything. Thirty-five apiece. Marcus had a brilliant first half. Knocks down the second. He's got 20 first half points. Eight of eight from the floor. Although two of four from the line. Carolina holding for the last shot. Timeout, Tar Heels. It's going downhill. If I'm Eric Musselman, don't be surprised if Must doesn't come out and trap this ball and be the aggressor. I don't think he'll sit back and just let North Carolina do what they have, they have drawn up. If there's a ball screen involved they may get after it oh to step in there blocker the other way and the throw down <laughs> i know how eric musselman thinks he gave his guys the green light to gamble a little bit and that ball started to turn in the corner what a flourish of a finish in the first half by arkansas and it's been their defensive answer against North Carolina where they have struggled all year. Arkansas maybe has found an answer. Turn up the pressure. And the rip and the run by Devo Davis and the high flying finish by Blocker. Well done by the Hawks. A 15-4 run to end the half. Arkansas by three. Time now to send it back to the studio. Zubin Mahensi, Seth Greenberg, and Dallin Cuff. To defeat Arkansas in the other semifinals. Day after Thanksgiving, welcome courtside John Chambi and Jimmy Dykes. All right, so that first half, Carolina had the lead yeah. most of the way, but Tremont Mack was a guy that really did great work. Yeah, he's been on the mark, has he not? Yeah. And if you're at Arkansas, and, and when they go into the portal, one of the things they look for is guys that can isolation basketball and win their matchup and that's what Tremont Mark is phenomenal defender he's also got the ability at 6-5 or 6-6 just to win his one-on-one -on -one. and Tremont Mark right now no answer for North Carolina on the defensive end for this kid and taking tough shots is not the goal of basketball but I'll tell you what it sure as heck helps when you have a guy or two that can make tough shots and Tremont Mark 20 points what a spectacular first half my apologies to Mr. Mark. Complete Sports Management brings you our first half stats. And Tremont Mark, 20 points. His career high is 26. So that was a sweet 16 win over Auburn. Yeah. And meanwhile, for North Carolina, they started red hot. They were 50% to begin the game. They finished the first half 2 for 10. And a foul immediately to begin the second half on Arkansas. Well, remember, Baycott only 11 minutes in that first half because of foul trouble. R.J. Davis had to sit out the last three or four, but expect Hubert Davis to go right to Armando Baycott 
to start this half. We give a Kyle Mitchell on that last foul. Baycott. And Davis putting it on the floor. Step back. And flying in for the tip in is Jalen Withers. He's a really athletic fly in type guy, is what Withers is. No one checks that on that weak side, and Withers makes him pay. Davis looking for some space. Mark has the bigger Withers on him. And a foul call. Withers doing a good job going up against a quicker defender. Mark did well to sell that foul. You know, I would, uh, if I'm North Carolina, I would love to have had the services of Cormac Ryan as a defender today on Tremont Marks. Similar size, similar athlete. Because right now, Hubert Davis just has no individual answer for how to defend 12 in red. Mitchell is fortunate that he didn't get called for over the back there. Hubert Davis wanted that call. Here's R.J. Davis. And that one rolls home. Really good action early to get R.J. Davis again with momentum. And his floater game is as good as you're going to find in that ACC. Davis with 11, and North Carolina retakes the lead. Trevin Brazil turns it over. Yeah, you're going to just RJ Davis, number four in white, is going to just circle cut out of this corner and just a little bit of momentum. And now you got Devo Davis playing chase instead of defending from behind. Oh, and that one a race there is. Brazil came flying in, swatted it out of bounds. We have not called his name nearly enough if you're an Arkansas fan. Trevin Brazil with no points in this game. And he comes in averaging right at eight offensive rebounds per game since he's been on the island, but no factor so far in this one. Brazil, the kid from Flint, Michigan, Missouri transfer. Coming back from that knee injury suffered last year. Davis, shot clock winding down. And it'll be a shot clock violation. Davis a little frustrated that there was no call. The Layden blocker, the primary defender, getting a lot of minutes because in the first game against Stanford, he led Arkansas in the plus-minus category. And a lot goes into that. To me, Boog, the biggest plus minus you look at, how many did I score versus how many did the guy I'm defending score? Just keep it simple. Mitchell counted. Makai Mitchell will go to the line, and he'll have a chance at a three-point play. Just a bully ball muscle drive by Mitchell from that right elbow. A little bit of a foot fake, and Baycott just gets lost, and Withers comes over, slides in late. I don't know where Baycott was going because even if Mitchell goes towards the sideline, he just completely sold out on the foot fake of Mitchell. Foul on Withers, his third. And Makai Mitchell completes a three point play, and now he'll be replaced by Chandler Lawson. Mitchell will grab a seat. The long arm of the law, Chandler Lawson. Number eight for the Razorbacks has a 7-7 wingspan. That would be number five right now in the NBA in terms of how long his reach is. Baycock gets it down low, shot blocked, and Brazil comes away with it. I think the wingspan of Lawson had a lot to do with it. There's a lot to deal with when number eight in red is on the floor. Brazil looking for some help. Shot clock winding down, working on Withers. That one tipped away, and it ends up with Davis. Carolina down by two. It's one thing for Arkansas guards to go one-on-one. -on -one. It's another thing for Brazil. That's not his strength. And he drove himself into a world of trouble. Just not in sync offensively, but 
one of the most explosive players in this tournament. Plays around the rim. Foul on Chandler Lawson. As they get it in to Ingram. Pushes his way to the basket and gets the foul. Tremont Mark charged with his second. So Tremont Mark was the star in the first half with 20 points. Picks up that personal and Ingram at the line. Ingram from Dallas, transferred to North Carolina from Stanford, former McDonald's All-America. He was the Pac-12 Rookie of the Year his first year for Jared Haas. Who he only shot 31% from the three-point line last year at Stanford, but he was forced to take a lot of late clock tough shots. And you're the best player on what was not a great team. You got the best defender on you at all times, and I, I, you can just watch film and see that much better player than those numbers would indicate. Brazil short on that shot. Ingram to Davis. Baycott inside. And the tip goes for Ingram. What a portal pickup by Hubert Davis. And the effort, the energy, and the passion that this kid plays with. And I get called for a bad foul 30 feet away from the rim. It'll be his second, Harrison Ingram. Hubert <laughs> Davis has elected to put Ingram on the smaller Tremont mark to see if they can shut him down. Jim Hartness going over and asking, is everything okay between Mark and Ingram? And both of them say, no, we're good. Mark with Withers on him. Shot clock winding down, and Mark drills it. Wow. When it's your day, it's your day. And he's got 23. And Cadell gets bumped on the floor. A one-point game here. It's our third-place matchup. Bad Boy Mowers battle for Atlantis, Arkansas by a point. When we come back... Cosmo's in the house. We'll talk athleticism with the Dolphin and Jimmy Dykes. Seriously, went out with that knee injury. He's finding his way back. He's impacting the game in other ways other than scoring, but it's hard to find that package and that explosiveness and athleticism that well, there's number two in red has. There's tons of NBA scouts here, yeah. and he's one of the guys they're looking at. Close to 30. NBA scouts. And you get the hole. It's on Caleb Bat. I would like to. I was an NBA scout for three years. I would like to see a little bit more dog out of Brazil, a little bit more just toughness. I mean, his body's not made for a lot of contact, but that's. If you're going to last in that league, you've got to have some dog in you. And I think that's one thing that they're looking at right now from Brazil. Pure stroke there from R.J. Davis. He's got 14 as he knocks it down, and Carolina has the lead. Those points after timeouts, so important in tight games. Hubert Davis was great with his play calls yesterday, and he just got another one on the ATO. Side battle wouldn't fall. Numbers for Carolina. Cado tracks down the miss. Withers a corner three. And they get a bump, and I believe that'll be on Baycott. Yep. Number three. 
Good job by Arkansas to fight defensively when they were outnumbered. You see R.J. Davis just comes off of a little bit of a pin down. And Arkansas has struggled on film against pin down action. They struggled last year as well. You've got to just stick right on the backside numbers of those pin down shooters if you're Arkansas right now chasing guys like R.J. Davis. Mark going to work. The pull up will fall. And he's got 25. The rim looks twice the size as it actually is at Tremont Mark right now. Inside, and Ingram had it knocked away. Two basketballs can actually go through a rim at the exact same time, side by side. But for Tremont Mark right now, it looks like you could get three or four of them to go through at the same time. That's how big it is. Literally throwing everything in the ocean right now. Soft touch, nice move by Baycott. And he's got seven. to tremble on it. Mark, step back, jumper, and it'll go! And that's North Carolina's best defender, Seth Trimble. Good gracious! Down the other end, and Davis able to absorb the contact, and he will go to the line. Arkansas scores on one end, and within three seconds, North Carolina's at the other end. Watch Mark right here. That jab step and step back into a fall away, it's really unguardable. And then there it is, 28-27 on the shot clock at the other end. North Carolina runs it right up your backside. Arkansas lazy with a transition defense, and it costs them. <laughs> Davis rattles it home. He's got 17. For Tremont Mark, 27, that's a new career high for him. Oh, oh I, I agree with your O. That could have easily been called a push-off by Lake Blocker. I think Lake Blocker, though, if he hangs with it. I don't know, that, that to me, that's an offensive foul. Yeah, I mean, that's a clear push-off right in front of us. Fallon Cadeau, his third. No Cormac Ryan today for North Carolina out with that sprained right ankle. Makai Mitchell inside. Wouldn't fall. Kicked away, and now it's Cadeau pushing up ahead. Tremble. They're going to say the ball was on its way up. The North Carolina bench wanted goaltending. But again, within three seconds, North Carolina gets the ball from one paint to the other. That Carolina run game is off and running. Yeah, the foul is on the floor. And then he said that Brazil got it on the way up. Actually, he's going to send him to the line. amazing if you just take shots that can actually be made you'll be a lap or two ahead of a lot of teams in college basketball and shot selection you know, Tremont Mark has made some tough guarded shots but it always comes down to the quality of my shot versus the quality of yours but to simplify it even more just take shots that you can actually make Mark almost had it tipped away spin move Mark again a block down underneath, and it'll be on Makai Mitchell. That's his fourth. Well, it could have gone either way. Makai yeah. Mitchell just, I, I think the I initial agree. riding of Baycott out of bounds, but you've got to be physical with Baycott. Yeah. Who does Eric Musselman come with now? You know, Bayfall got some minutes. I would go with Chandler Lawson. 
with the experience. Man, right call, but not popular with Eric Musselman. Already eight fouls on Arkansas. It's a one and one spot. Carolina has been great from the strike, 15 of 23, so eight misses. And he, Baycott, has been tremendous this year from the line. He comes in at 84% on the year and a career 66% free throw shooter. So he has gone to work in the offseason with a routine and a confident stroke. Got them both. He's going to get there six, seven times a game. And over the course of his career, he was giving away three or four points by not shooting a high percentage. He's got the answer so far from the strike this year. It's a 6-0 Carolina run under 13 to go. And the Heels lead by that many. And a pass overshot kicks to the corner. So a turnover. North Carolina looking to build on their lead. Davis. And Ellis pulls down the rebound. L. Ellis has got to get going for Arkansas. Leading score at Louisville last year, but to me he has lost his offensive confidence early in the season. Inside, that's a pretty nice move there from Chandler Lawson. I'm telling you, when you got a wingspan of 7'7, seven, seven, you can get shots off around the rim about any time you want. When you look at it like a macaw bird that we saw earlier this week out there. Coco the macaw. Yeah. yeah. And the animals, Jimmy Dykes, John Chambi with you. That boy Mower's battle for Atlantis. What a tremble. Pass. Good ball movement. He knocks it down. Was that Ingram with a pass? I mean, he grew up as a point guard. His vision to find the shooter tucked away in the far corner was phenomenal. It's a seven point Carolina advantage. Blocker off the feed from Mark. Blocker inside. That rattles out. Washington pulls down the board. Whoa. Davis, quick move! Wow! Another shot made within the first two seconds of their possession. This thing's getting chippy as it should. A big time game in November for third place. Watch the vision of Ingram. I mean, he's gonna for his. And Tremont Mark has been tremendous. 21st half points, a career high 27 for him. If there's a tiebreaker in the SEC ACC challenge, this, this should this game should determine it. This one's not part of it, right? No, if we're keeping score, that's correct. How about Arkansas with the opportunity to play North Carolina today, and then their next game is against Duke. Back to back, huge opportunities for the Hogs. Good rebound, blocker, offensive board, and the putback. I like him a lot, man. He's not afraid as a true freshman. And Eric Musselman giving this kid minutes. A big time ball game. Yeah, he got his first start yesterday. And again, here in this one. Ingram. Cadeau used the ball fake. Jumper. Got it. Really well done. Take up the slack with a ball fake. Didn't get rushed. One bounce it into a 15-footer in the vision again by Ingram as a passer, spot on. Locker here, the freshman. He was the number 31 overall recruit in the ESPN 100. So a big-time player for Musselman in Fayetteville. A foul underneath. They may take a look at this. I think Brazil, I, I, you're responsible for the contact to the head, but, but that was okay. But out of the corner of my eye, it, I think the officials are going to take a look at it just to make sure. Take a break, come back, and sort things out.
Welcome to College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. What a smooth handoff. They're taking that to the house. What even is this? Don't touch my things, gross. Janice, when you bundle your home or renters with your auto, Progressive provides 24-7 protection for almost everything you own. But you really need... My weighted hoop? It's for my snatched waist. It's my dog chase lounger. Foot treadmill. That's my Tuesday chalice. Purse that says purse. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. I can't live without oxygen. Solid gold coffee machine. Lake making kit. Really? Can Progressive cover that too? Yes, but... Hi, it's Janice. I'll take five. Is my voice on TV right now? True story, the ACC-SEC Challenge will make November feel like March. First, number 7 Tennessee takes on number 14 North Carolina. Then, it's a clash between number 9 Duke and number 20 Arkansas. Begins Wednesday at 7.15 on ESPN. Sonic Blockbusters coming up. That will be a lot of fun. Number 20 Arkansas, number 14 North Carolina. Our game here, third place game in Carolina by nine. The play going into our commercial break involved Elliot Cadeau and Trevin Brazil. They come away with a common foul on white two and a flagrant foul on red two. And I, I, I agree with the call. So Cadeau went down hard. And Book, since it's a flagrant foul and number two got, gets injured off of the call right there, Hubert Davis can have anyone shoot the free throw, so he goes with R.J. Davis. Pretty good choice at 85%. Led the ACC last year at 88%. And anytime a flagrant one results in the injured player not able to shoot the free throws, the coach gets the choice. And it's an easy one for Hubert Davis. Well, the big part of that, though, is that for Cadeau now, he's sitting and he's got four fouls. We have a chat with Cormac Ryan, who's sitting today with that sprained ankle. And for Trevin Brazil, he has three fouls. So the lead is 11. Sometimes a 53% free throw shooter takes a little longer to get back to able to shoot your free throws. I'm just saying. Ingram backing down, backing down, left hand, and rolls it home. That is what we will see the championship game from Villanova. They just muscle drive you and upper body strength that you cannot handle. Mark, and one, wow! Shaman Mark has been sensational. He's got 30 and a chance to make it 31 as he goes to the line. What a performance by Trayvon Mark, and Arkansas needs all 31 of the point because he is the only offense that Eric Musselman has working right now. North Carolina fouled three-point shooters multiple times yesterday. And why? If they make one, they make one, pat them on the butt and say, well done. But I've never been to a practice yet in all my days where a coach practices blocking three-point shots and guys just continue to lose their discipline on it. They're going to go and check to see what, maybe if it's a two or a three? Or who the fouls on? Yeah, is it a two or is it a three? Clearly, it is three. a three. So he's got thirty. The tournament record is forty-one. Two thousand and twelve. Andre Hollins, who just cannot jump towards the shooter. 
the simple stuff in basketball that becomes uncommon will drive a coach nuts. Arkansas did not have a player come up with a 30-point game last year. This is the free throw. Ingram tracks down the loose ball. Does Arkansas have the ability to turn that defense to pressure up like they did this last 10 minutes of the first half? They got themselves the lead. Yep. There's the start. Razorbacks the other way. Mark. Davenport. Did he walk? No. Well, he did. It just didn't get called. Okay. So now Davis into the front court. Inside a little short as he was shoved and now it's Davenport the other way Blocker up and under and puts it in and boot to me. That's on Armando Baycott. I mean, he's a 6'11 preseason All-American That's fading away with a soft shot on that short corner as good of a turnover as much as a shot is what it was Davis with blocker on him. Davis gets another third three of the day, and he's got 24. It's a two. I beg your pardon. And he has 23. And Mark rattles that one home. 32 for Tremont. I would make at some point, if I'm North Carolina, Tremont Mark pass the basketball. There's no gap help, there's no doubling of him. He's taking the ball anywhere, anytime he wants to go into that pull-up jump shot. Davis looking for space, had it stripped away, and then Blocker bangs it off of Davis. Arkansas basketball. And I love six and red for Arkansas. Who knows speed? Yeah, the Dolphin knows speed. Cosmo will enlighten us when we come back. We talked about how they went rim to rim within three seconds. If you're Arkansas, you've got to keep those fast break points under control. North Carolina with 12 of them in this game. You don't want that number to creep much higher. With 7.32 to go. Trimble on Mark. Davis chasing blocker. And now Davenport. Makai Mitchell going to work on Baycott. Ingram takes it away. Shot blocked. Tip. Knocked out. And here comes Mark. Step through. And they get the foul on North Carolina. And he is a handful here today, Tremont Mark. Good think about it, the 32 points, and he's only missed two shots, 13 out of 15, four out of five from the three. He had a dozen against Memphis. The Tigers getting loose out in the hallway as they get set to take on Villanova. It's our championship game, and that comes your way next. Talking to Penny Hardaway at halftime of this game. He's talking about we have to be physical on both sides of the ball for 40 minutes and stay disciplined with their game plan. And I'm anxious to watch to see what Memphis does defensively against that Villanova isolation game. Because if you just let Villanova start bullying you towards the rim, you are in trouble. Mark with 34 continues to add to his career high. But it's Carolina leading under seven to go. And the heels on top by six. Eric Dixon with 34 yesterday for Villanova. David Jones with 36 last night for Memphis. And now Tremont Mark goes for 34. Davenport trying to handle Ingram. And one. Can't. He's just too much. Yeah, he's just too much. As bad of a matchup issue that... North Carolina has with Tremont Mark. Ingram is kind of right there because not only can he be the matchup problem as a passer, 
Just these simple back you down, left shoulder turn, elevate in front of the rim stuff. Because Davenport's a big physical kid. But Ingram, yeah, clearing out space legally. Tough baskets. Had a season high 20 before fouling out with 343 left in regulation against Villanova. Can't hit the free throw there. Ingram with 13 here today. And they're starting to switch now again on Tremont Mark instead of keeping the primary defender on him. I think that's a gamble. Mitchell, a little bit strong. Ingram the rebound. Here's Davis on the go. Good job by Baycott to stay with Mitchell. That's a hard, fast drive. Bam. Scoring. RJ Davis and one. Whoa. This kid was a high school All-American and a New York Gatorade player of the year out of high school. A foul on Makai Mitchell. That is his fifth, and he is done. Boogan, North Carolina's 2022 Final Four run. He had a 30-point game versus Baylor. He had a 12-rebound game versus Kansas and a 12-assist game versus Marquette. And he's just the type of kid that plays with a chip, not afraid of those contact plays. A ton of career games. Comes into the island with 105 career games, and when he's good, North Carolina is good. He's got a season-high 26. He had 23 yesterday against Nova. His career high is 30. And a foul. And they're going to get that on uh, Trimble. Get tangled up with Blocker. Hubert Davis frustrated. Hubert Davis, a good clue for him. If the glasses come off, usually not happy. <laughs> That's that, just that that that's a that's just a me is what I've taken away and watch you, you know him as well as anybody because when he was we with ESPN, together a bunch a ton of games yeah. and There's not a sweeter kinder joyful guy in college basketball than Hubert Davis magnificent human. Yeah, he's He has the job that he's always dreamed When it's still the best players ever put on a Carolina Jersey is Hubert Davis How about college football and coming your way tonight Texas Tech at Number seven, Texas on ABC. And then Saturday, number five, Florida State at Florida. Seven Eastern ESPN. The day wraps up Georgia at Georgia Tech. Number one of the country on ABC, 730 Eastern. Hubert David still the career three-point all-time record holder at North Carolina, 43%. I mean, one of the greatest percentage three-point shooters in NBA yeah. history. Number two all-time right behind Steve Kerr. Rojic cuts inside and used the rim to protect himself and puts it in. I've been waiting for Wojcik to show me something offensively. Uh, he made a hard drive. Those guys that have filled the minutes of Cormac Ryan today, Wojcik and Seth Trimble, have more than held their own. It's a major loss for Carolina sitting on the bench. But Hubert Davis has depth this year that he has not had the last couple of years. It's paid off today. There's Cormac Ryan, 18 points yesterday, out with bad ankles today. Davis high off the window wouldn't fall and mark Where's the offense come from for Arkansas other than Tremont Mark? Lawson inside Out of bounds and it belongs to North Carolina You can't look at it to the end of two minutes Watch Wojcik right here Dad, a long-time assistant in North Carolina, now Michigan State, but a really good job of getting to the other side of the rim. Going away from the rim and getting the ball back up. Not easy. Carolina by 11. That's the spacing on the opposite side of the floor for him to pass to. Knocked out of bounds. 12 in the shot clock. And it'll stay North Carolina basketball. Well, you see how they're using Ingram. They're putting him on the left side of the floor. So as he backs down, that right hand is always ready to throw strikes as a passer. Step back, Davis. Shot blocked by Blocker. And 
inside, and that'll go Caleb Battle and one. Well, I was asking where the offense is going to come from to help Tremont Mark. It should be from Caleb Battle. Comes in as Arkansas's leading scorer at 16 a game. Another big physical wing that can drive the ball through contact, take a hit and finish. It's a big time basket for Arkansas, not only to score, but now to stop the clock, get to the free throw line. And will Arkansas come with some type of pressure right now? You start creeping towards that four minute mark. Battle hits. She had 21 and the loss to Memphis. And that pressure's coming, just like I thought it would. Danger time for North Carolina right now. With all the long arms that Arkansas throws at you full court. Cadeau into the front court. Elliot Cadeau, the freshman, getting to start today with Ryan on the bench with that ankle issue. Cadeau has four fouls. Ingram to tremble in the corner. Bam! Well, that's the second time that the combo of Ingram and Trimble have made him pay. And good spacing there for North Carolina. Battle from way downtown. And Arkansas content to let Ingram just play bully ball and back down and be a quarterback on that left side of the floor. And just stay right with it if you're Hubert Davis. It's the spacing on this side of the floor that you're concerned with right now. And a foul on Caleb Battle. And Harrison Ingram so versatile. Look at his ability right here. Always eyes up the feel and the spacing. Trimble release rotation result for the Tar Heels. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers. Legendary. Right, Zubin, thanks. Roy Williams in the house. And North Carolina leading it by 11. And those are Dasani waters, by the way, not to be confused. Yeah, just Dasani in a can. <laughs> hey, great. I'm telling you, other than being with you, maybe the most important 45 minutes I've had the last five days, sitting with Roy Williams at practice the other day, just to let him talk about how much he loves North Carolina basketball. He's enjoying his retirement right now. It is not, there's a lot of coaches, Booga, when they leave, they don't want their former program to have success. And they get jealousy inside of them, want to walk around like they're the only ones that can do it. That is not Roy Williams. The humility and, he, and the love that he truly has for this program just jumped out at me in our 45 minutes together. Love that guy. <laughs> Got a special place in the history of college basketball, and certainly inside that particular program. The story here today has been the guy that just gave off the basketball. Come on, Mark. 34 career high, and they just got Cadeau, and that is going to end his afternoon. He fouled out yesterday as well. He's a tough, competitive little son of a gun. And Hubert Davis, so is he's got to learn when to foul and when not to foul because out of his 10 fouls the last two days, four or five of them had just been undisciplined and careless. He'll learn. A kid from West Orange, New Jersey. And we'll watch the rest of the way as Blocker misses the free throw. And the kid cares, though, right? Well, and he's got a guy sitting next to him that could end up being a, a pretty good mentor in Marcus Page. Oh, absolutely. You're a point guard. You want to learn from one of the greats. Marcus Page in his ear right now. I, I personally love the reaction of Cadeau because he's taking it personal. Some kids sit down with 5,000 and say, oh, well. Logic uses the fake, flips it up, wouldn't go. Loose ball, and it ends up with Lawson. Davenport, a wide open look at it. Splash. Arkansas just refusing to go away. Very similar to what they did to Memphis last night. And this is the 
part of the game where Arkansas will, yeah, turn up the pressure, double-team the ball. Cadeau is one of the primary handlers who's out. And that pressure should be intense right now with 2.40 to go from the Hogs. Trimble being harassed here. The double-team comes, and they get the foul on Mark, and that will be his third. Luke, not a good foul because it occurred, I believe, there was five seconds left on the shot clock. Arkansas did a good job of trapping the ball out of R.J. Davis's hands. And why foul Trimble with five seconds to go? Trimble has matched his career high with 11 here today. Remember, he started the game against UNI and against Northern Iowa. He didn't even attempt a shot. No, UNI as if we didn't play against That's right. UNI. No, no Northern, Northern Iowa. Iowa. Right. Thank you for clearing that up. We would not do well. Me and you? Yeah, not on the basketball court. Oh, no. Any guy and a burly guy. There'll be a lot of burlies and huskies <laughs> in our championship. <laughs> we'll kick up ahead as we close in on two minutes to play in North Carolina. The lead is 10. Davis into the paint and he gets fouled. Well, R.J. Davis that time does not accept the trap. He got a little bit of an angle, and so I'm going with a blow by it, at least get myself to the free throw line. But if you're North Carolina, you cannot afford to turn the ball over right now and give Arkansas a run out. It's just a hard foul. Collisions at the rim happen in college basketball. And those plays of ver verticality will have some heavy contact and hard falls. Again, you're sending a 88% ACC best free throw shooter to the line right now for North Carolina. What a luxury to close out games, right? Yeah, I mean, he's shown a knack for finding space, and then when he gets the space, Davis, a guy that is absolutely explosive, looks to be a little uncomfortable. I'm not sure. I mean, he just he got hit hard there and went down hard. Taking a little extra time with the free throw. with 27 make it 28 two off of his career high Mark looking for some help and Davis throws it away and the turnover is for issue for Arkansas they're 12th in this game. They had 18 yesterday. And defensively, they gave up 84 yesterday, Arkansas did to Memphis. And they're going to give up probably that or more today. The defensive consistency of Arkansas is still a question mark, I know, with Eric Musselman. Wojcik fires. Got it. Biggest lead of the game for Carolina. They're up by 15. Those guys that got the minutes because of Cormac Ryan being out delivered today for North Carolina. Wojcik and Trimble. Cadeau got extended minutes because of it. Lawson put it in. Tremont Mark still down. He took a hard fall and wasn't able to catch himself. It was all... All body on the back side, it came crashing to the ground. Oh. He just got himself into a really vulnerable position. And no way to come down. Yeah, I mean, that, that left hip or... Cheekbone. Well, 
One of the great individual performances we've seen during Feast Week from Tremont Mark in this game, and he's in serious pain right now. going to go look at it. So Jeb Hartness on short. Yeah, they took a peek at it. No foul, no flagrant. And I mean, Mark is hurt. Well, the, the concern by looking at the trainers is that left hip area. They're concerned about that left leg. Is that, that left side lower back area is what took the brunt of the fall. Wow. Yeah, falling on his, basically getting up in the air and then Kind of squared up and landed like right on his tailbone. But more on the left side. And they're bringing a stretcher in. Mark's still down. They're going to take him off the court. And we'll be back after this. Can't sleep. Just a lot on my mind. I can't sleep either. It only gets tougher with age. Mom, what? Well, knowing Progressive can protect your home, auto, and business should help you relax. Good, because I could use a good night's sleep. Me too. You know how early a chimney sweep gets up every day? Wait. Is this all a dream? Why would Jamie be in my dream? I am America's biggest spokesperson. Debatable. I said biggest. Well, he's got you there. for dolphins to survive in the desert. And eagles don't tend to nest with giants. But with NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube, you can watch your favorite teams out of market Sunday games. So no matter where you live, it'll feel a little more like home. At least on Sundays. NFL Sunday Ticket. Thanksgiving week sale ends Monday.
Guys, thanks very much. So Eric Musselman watching his Tremont Mark taken off the court via stretcher. And certainly be thinking of him that he is all right. Fight for the loose ball out of bounds. And it'll stay with Arkansas. 108 to go. North Carolina leading by 13. Arkansas at a three point advantage at halftime. But it's been RJ Davis. 28 points. Outstanding. And Harrison Ingram as well, impacting the game in multiple ways. Baycott pulls down the rebound. And under a minute to go, North Carolina with the ball and a double-digit lead. Yeah, but more importantly, Boog, all the energy has left the ballroom as it should. North Carolina obviously going to win the game. All we can report on is what we saw. I know the Arkansas trainers were rubbing their hands up and down the left side of Tremont Mark's leg. It appeared to be testing could he feel it or not. Not a lot of movement from Tremont Mark. There will be a lot of prayers. We'll try to give an update as we're here for the championship game, but just a, a sad, tough ending to what has been a heck of a game. And certainly all that we're concerned with now is the health of Tremont Mark. Trimble has it into the front court. And North Carolina will come away with a win. 87-72 the final.